and the meritors from the Collins Wiki. Uh, because uh, we did say eight, 10 minutes, but please, uh, I don't know whether you have up to that much now, uh, but I know you will do justice to this. So please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair. I, oh, yes, uh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Vice Chair. I recognize the urgency of time and um, I will do my best to uh, you know, keep it within uh, just a little uh, over uh, five minutes. Um, there are things you don't rush, but uh, I'm going to rush this <laughs> for, for the essence of time. Um, the state of uh, the organization, I have um, some kind of, um, you know, uh, three way um, uh, intervention, state of the organization, um, you know, uh, but also, uh, if I'm reading uh, correctly, uh, history of the organization, but also uh, perspectives. Now, for each of those three pillars, I'm going to spend uh, a minute and a half each. Um, what is the state of the organization? The state of the organization, if we have to tell ourselves uh, the truth, is not rosy. But is it murderous? No. We are, however, uh, in a, a period of, um, you know, uh, existential uh, exigencies. Now, what that means is that um, what it is meant to do to us is essentially to um, shake us up. Uh, uh, some of you that are in psychology know what, um, you know, shock therapy uh, is all about. So this, uh, the, the evolution that we're going through now is supposed to provide for us some sort of uh, shock uh, therapy. Uh, we are not done yet as an organization. The prospects are there. The potentials have been locking in the corner. Maybe what is happening now is an invitation to one and all to uh, you know, begin to rethink, reassess what the organization, the essence of the organization uh, is. And so that would be, um, you know, what I consider to be the, um, uh, you know, the state of the organization for now. In terms of our history, um, I wouldn't dwell much on that. The fact that you are here as a participant means that uh, at least you understand where we are coming from. But just for this purpose of, um, emphasis, I would say that NIDO as, uh, as an entity, uh, as you know, ours, our constituency is NIDO uh, Europe, um, has been existing for, well, um, you know, approximately 20 years now uh, globally. Now, um, we have gone through certain uh, stages up until now. We do know that uh, in organizational developments, you have about 12 different elements in terms of uh, evolution uh, stages. Now, specifically on uh, NIDO as a whole, but more specifically uh, NIDO uh, Europe, based on my personal observation, because uh, I happen to be around uh, you know, for quite a while now, uh, I can summarize that uh, we have gone, um, you know, through a period of resistance to change. Uh, not what was perceived at the beginning, uh, which is, uh, you know, organizing the diaspora to actually mean something valuable for Nigeria. That is the goal. That has never changed. But the pathway to achieving that goal is actually where the problem resides. And so we have gone through quite uh, some evolutions uh, in terms of resisting some of the uh, uh, pathways. Uh, and then linked to that is that lack of, um, you know, uh, vision, um, you know, in terms of uh, clear vision and strategy. Now, different leaders, and that includes me, have always had to do some search and to say to themselves, well, in my assessment, this is what appears to be missing in the organization as of this moment. And so what I bring to the table is actually bringing in my skills, 
bringing in my network uh, and uh, all of that to actually work on those areas that one believes to be you know the missing link in uh, the path towards achieving the diaspora you know being uh, a constituency of value uh, for nigeria now each and every one of us uh, chapter uh, you know sorry uh, continental chair emeritus uh, would have to do some assessment you know to determine what his uh, unfortunately there hasn't been her what his uh, chairmanship uh, meant in my case I believe that, um, you know, strengthening our, uh, you know, structure, institutional culture was the focus of, um, you know, my uh, chairmanship. Uh, I mean, it goes on. Now, what we have also gone through and perhaps still going through is ineffective communication strategy. Sometimes, especially in the last uh, couple of weeks, I have noticed that even in the face of the crisis, there appear to be areas and issues that both sides of the divide are actually saying exactly the same thing, but the choice of a communication channel, the choice of communication strategy has actually uh, make it you know, come across as if there is a you know, deep-rooted um, uh, conflict. Uh, if we pay a little more attention to that, might be we might we will uh, prevail. And then we have also had to deal with, um, you know, um, inadequate leadership, um, you know, uh, styles. Uh, some of us came in, uh, not quite sure what exactly we are coming in to do. And I'm not just talking of uh, the leadership at the central body, uh, the CEC. I'm also talking of uh, leadership at the uh, chapter level. We've all got to now reassess genuinely what we are bringing. And don't get me wrong, there is absolutely nothing wrong in coming into a leadership with a personal, you know, maybe even selfish agenda. But you have got to always put at the forefront the core goal. That has been lacking uh, to some extent. And then also, cultural barriers. Now, we so often tend to, um, you know, uh, forget the fact that uh, we are Nigerians. That's where we had our ori uh, initial orientation. But we are operating in, envir in an environment here in Europe that is different. Sometimes we haven't taken sufficiently the, those cultural, um, you know, uh, differences into consideration in the way you know, we do uh, our things. Um, second to the last is, um, you know, uh, insufficient uh, resources. Now, there has always been talk about this seed money that was provided to NIDO uh, at the beginning. I mean, it's peanuts. It's next to nothing come to think of it. The capacity for NIDO to be self-sustaining and actually have some reserve is very much there. If we are able to surmount all of the uh, you know six uh, points that I had uh, made um, earlier, and then finally, um, as far as the history is uh, concerned, I believe that short-termism has been an issue within Naido. People do not leaders that have um, you know led us in the past have not sufficiently looked beyond two years or four years uh, to say in the next decade, in the next two, three decades, in 50 years from now, this is where I want to see NIDO to be. And so there is a need for us to begin to uh, you know, look deeper than we have done so far. But I'll tell you something. What has emerged out of the last uh, EGM gladdens my heart. When I see the likes of uh, Vire Komolafe driving things, when I see the likes of uh, Dr. Ebuchenam doing things, these are young people, progressive-minded, but also know exactly what they are doing. And seeing them walking under the tutelage of the likes of Issa uh, Abdullahi just gives me enormous hope that eventually we are going to get it right. 
Some of us that have retired as chairman emeritus, but are certainly not tired. We are retired, but not tired. We remain there at the back seat, ready, but also able to always, you know, offer that support that you need. I mean, if we have left anybody in any doubts about our ability to come out of our seclusion, to help out when the time is right. Well, the last uh, few months, uh, sorry, the last few weeks have uh, actually provided you some clue about the fact that you can always count on us. Now, what you can count on is us taking the lead, volunteering initiatives and all of that. No, when you need help, you've got to ask for the help because we, Actually, trying to drive things from the back seat is, is wrong. It should be you driving it with uh, our support, and we have proven that you can always find us. Now, very, very important uh, point that I need to uh, drop here before I conclude is the fact that it is not for nothing that the, chapter, the chairman emeritus are in consensus, in complete unanimity, that what you are doing is right and you've got to be supported. That is something you shouldn't take for granted. No matter how the other side uh, pretends that it doesn't matter, that is insignificant. It is inconsequential. Take it as a value and run to the bank with it. Concluding, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am meant to also talk about uh, perspectives. Where do we go from here? Well, the journey has started already. We are having an AGM. Uh, another one is taking place uh, somewhere, an illegal one, and uh, hopefully the court will um, you know, prove that uh, with time. But let us be very clear about one thing. Do not fight dirty. Leave it for the other side. Let us hang on solidly behind the rule of law. We may not always win, but when we lose, we re-strategize because we believe in what we are doing. Let us even assume, let's take the worst case uh, scenario, that ultimately we do not uh, prevail. And that is because the court said we have we cannot uh, prevail for one technical reason or the other. That is even not a problem. The reason it is not a problem is that not all good ideas, not all good fights have the right timing. It could very well be that the timing of the reforms of the rebirth that uh, we are dreaming about is simply not, uh, it's not there. So it may be a good idea whose time has not come. But is that the case in this particular, uh, you know, uh, crisis that we're dealing with? No, I don't believe so. I believe we'll have a good fight. And I believe that uh, ultimately we're going to prevail and we'll all be left with our individual consciences. I will end by inviting you, ladies and gentlemen, to so use the remaining part of uh, you know this um, uh, gathering to actually chart that course. So it is not up to me to provide the perspective in terms of where we go from here. That is for us all as a house. And let us apply ourselves credibly to it. And in the end, we'll be happy we did because this is historical and history is there to judge us. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, sir. I'm not Thank you so much. So I was just wondering, maybe you might need to put that in the right top and we can share that. <laughs> I thought that was very insightful. You know, Jane, you're always an asset to us, you know, a resource to us, um, a guidance to us. Thank you so much. Um, I am going to, um, we, we need to move on to the next one, but because um, I have to 